In this third part of the molecules of life, we will look specifically at protein structure. We'll take a look at the 20 different kinds of amino acids, how they link into peptide bonds. We'll talk about four different levels of protein structure, and we'll integrate this all by looking at the specific example of hemoglobin and sickle cell disease. So proteins are made of linear chains of amino acids linked by peptide bonds. This figure shows you both what an amino acid is and um, what peptide bonds are. So an amino acid, as the name implies, has an amino group, and this amino group is this nitrogen here with the two hydrogens sticking out. So that's amino. The acid part is the carboxylic acid, the carbon with uh, double bonded to an oxygen and um, bonded to another oxygen is called a carboxylic acid because this hydrogen here tends to dissociate and so we have in water a neutral pH and as a result uh, we have a negative charge. Uh, on the other end, the amino group in water and neutral pH tends to pick up a hydrogen and this amino group has a positive charge. So the amino acids in general have, are uh, charged. They have both a positive and a negative charge. The R in this box stands for what's called a side chain. Each of the 20 different amino acids has a different configuration of, of uh, functional groups in the side chain and which gives them different properties as I'll explain. Okay. So we have the uh, amino group and the carboxylic acid group and then we have a carbon in the middle. This carbon in the middle is called the alpha carbon. So these three atoms, the nitrogen, the alpha carbon, and the carboxylic acid carbon, they form what's called the backbone atoms. And peptide bonds are linkages then between the amino group of one amino acid and the carboxylic group of the next amino acid. And what's shown here in this uh, pink shaded region are the oxygen and the two hydrogens that come off as water. And since water comes off, this is called a dehydration reaction. And once the peptide bond has formed, we now have a dipeptide, and we can have a long chain of uh, peptide bonded amino acids and that's called a polypeptide chain. So a polypeptide chain then has a backbone, so called, that consists of these backbone uh, amino acids, so that's a peptide backbone, and then each of these amino acids has its own side group hanging off the side. So here are the amino acids with different side groups. You really shouldn't have to worry about um, recapitulating the structures or knowing the structures of all 20 amino acids. We're just going to look at the groupings of amino acids by the physical chemical properties of their side chains, the R groups. Okay? And we're just going to have worry about a, a few major divisions. The, uh, the major divisions by, are by how they interact with water. So we have a hydrophobic group of amino acids, which means that their side chains are all hydrophobic molecules. You notice that they all have carbons okay, and hydrogens. Uh, an occasional sulfur, but sulfur has the same electronegativity virtually as carbon, 
So these are all nonpolar side groups, and that makes them hydrophobic. Same for these molecules here. So amino acids with these nonpolar side chains are all going to want to be in the center of a protein molecule away from water because they're all hydrophobic. In contrast, we have a second group of amino acids that are hydrophob hydrophilic, loving water. And they're hydrophilic because their side chains either contain charge, okay, and histidine contains a partial charge at neutral pH. Okay. So they're either charged, and here we have glutamic acid and aspartic acid with negative charges, or their side chains contain polar groups. So carbon, oxygen um, bonds, which are polar, and therefore they interact with water. And these are polar as well. Okay. So all of these amino acids have side chains that will love to interact with water. In this figure here shown in group C, these are special cases. We're not going to worry about selenocysteine, which is the so-called 21st amino acid. Uh, we're only going to uh, deal with the conventional 20 amino acids. These special cases are not hydrophilic, but they do special things. Glycine has, basically has no side chain. Its alpha carbon has only hydrogens attached to it. Proline assumes this really special shape. Okay. Uh, you notice that the amino group is involved in uh, an extra bond. Um, and cysteine has the sulfhydryl group, uh, which gives it very special properties in terms of protein structure that I'll talk about in just a minute. Okay. So let's talk about protein structure. And we can think about four different levels of protein structure. The primary structure is simply the sequence of amino acids that are bonded together by peptide linkages. Now, as a protein is made, parts of the protein will spontaneously coil into what are called alpha helices, and other parts will form spontaneously into what are called beta sheets. And these two structures, alpha helices and beta sheets, are called secondary structures. Then the overall three-dimensional shape of the protein, how the secondary structure elements are arranged spatially with respect to each other and the connecting elements in between, uh, the overall three-dimensional structure is the tertiary structure. Okay? And then some proteins are composed of multiple polypeptide chains. So this would be a single polypeptide chain. And then when you have multiple polypeptide chains getting together, then that is quaternary structure. Just a, a couple of minutes to talk about secondary structure. Secondary structure is held together by hydrogen bonds. And the hydrogen bonds are uh, shown in yellow. They are formed between a, uh, the hydrogen and a polar oxygen molecule, and maybe we have another uh, oxygen molecule. So this oxygen molecule contains a partial negative charge. This hydrogen molecule contains a partial positive charge. and uh, this is a, a special weak ionic interaction that's called a hydrogen bond. Okay. So these hydrogen bonds occur between the peptide backbone atoms in the polypeptide chain, um, and that causes the polypeptide chain to coil spontaneously into alpha helices. This alpha helix is the most common secondary structure element found in proteins. The next most common secondary structure is the beta sheets. 
Beta sheets also involve hydrogen bonds. Also between atoms and the peptide backbone. So this zigzag line is the peptide backbone. These are nitrogens. Okay. And when they associate like this, okay, this is a side view here. You see that uh, these are called sometimes called beta pleated sheets because you, you can see this sort of pleating um, effect. Then the overall three-dimensional uh, shape of the protein is held together by a number of different interactions. One is hydrogen bonding, like we saw um, before holding secondary structure together. One of the most important is actually hydrophobic interactions. The desire of these hydrophobic side chains of amino acids to be away from water and to be uh, clustered together. And you will always find these hydrophobic interactions in the center of a folded protein molecule where they can be away from surrounding water. Then um, other side chains, the ones that are ionized and have carry positive and negative charges, they can form ionic bonds. And finally, the cysteines with their sulfhydryl groups, the sulfhydryl groups can form disulfide covalent bonds. So these are covalent bonds between the sulfurs and they're very strong and they have a special role in stabilizing the structure of proteins.